Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Rating Fly Podcast. Uh, I'm super excited today. I'm excited. It's it's good. I'm I'm back here with Sam Dow. Done many a podcast with him so far. This time you can actually hear me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I again, I apologize for the terrible audio in that last one, and as well just for the <laughs> general content of that last one. It was deep. It was deep. It was it was a deep combo. It was like late at night and we were both tired and I. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so uh, <laughs> the next few podcasts that we're going to do, or, or at least just just the one small bit of admin detail that I have right now, is just that we are going to be trying to keep the podcasts down to be a little shorter, like under an hour, uh, and the reason for that is just because for the service that we're paying for, there are, we, we're only allowed a limited amount of space, and I don't want to go over that space, and Plus, it just kind of keeps me and my thoughts in check anyway. So, it's nice. Yes, it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we figured out the uh, microphone problems as well. Although, uh, if you do experience any, like, sounds that are disturbing or weird, I mean, it's a Saturday and we're recording right now, so people are kind of busy around the house. And we're recording this before Super Bowl weekend. So, yes. I mean, technically, we're in Super Bowl weekend, but... It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We don't we don't want to date this podcast or anything, but we have no idea who, who wins tomorrow. So Yeah. We're not gonna date this or anything, but it's February first. It's February first. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. Yeah, so this is gonna go up on, on Monday. So uh if you if you wanna let us know who who won. <laughs> Are you happy about who won? Just let us know. Yeah. For anybody who does want to send us emails or questions or anything like that, I'm dying to have some questions, people. Come on. Yeah, we come want on. to have like a question segment on this podcast. We're, we're This is going to be episode seven, all right? We're seven podcasts in. So we need some questions and stuff to like break things up. Um, just as well, for anybody who doesn't know, if you're listening on Spotify, we can't thank you enough because that is a, that is a huge part of advancing uh, a podcast. And, and I mean, it's taken us a long time to get here. So thank you so much for listening, uh, wherever it is. Yes. Thank you mm-hmm. to everyone who listens on Spotify. It's a very big moment. It's mm-hmm. huge stepping stone to what will hopefully become something bigger. Oh yeah. Yes. Should we just jump into the topic? Yes, we should. All right, let's just jump into it. Yeah, we're going to be talking today about online media. Wow. I mean, we could like put brackets in like specifically YouTube, but... YouTube I... is a mess right now. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there Boom. it is. Controversial, we know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, so I brought this up with Angel in, in, in our podcast. Go mm-hmm. listen to that one. It was a lot of fun. I brought this up with him, and uh, I mean, it just really occurred to me that I've been doing YouTube uh, as as Raven Flight Films, now Raven Flight Films, formerly the Bubba One Ten, <laughs> for nine years now. It's gonna be ten this September. YouTube veteran, and, uh, huh? YouTube veteran. It feels like it sometimes, yeah. in a lot of in a lot of ways, and we can discuss about that in a minute. But like. Yeah, I mean, that's a long time, and I have nothing to show for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, part of it's my fault, but part of it's also YouTube's fault. And I don't want to come on to here and say, like, I, I personally hold the opinion that YouTube could be a lot better, and they're not doing all they could, but I also don't want to, like, completely trash their personnel and, and their policies and stuff. Because a lot of it makes sense. Like, a lot of the things that they do, a lot of the policies they institute, like the most... The, I say the most recent one. The one that's probably garnered the most attention lately is the whole one about uh, demonetizing child-targeted videos. Yes, you now have to specifically list whether or not your video is child-friendly. Mm-hmm. Which is stupid because if it's not then you'll get demonetized and if it is but then there's something that they deem that's not child friendly in the child friendly video then you get a lawsuit so it's a very very tight rope that most people are just choosing to be non-child friendly because there's so much stuff and you can get in trouble if you are child friendly if the people in your comments are not which is why so many 
uh, child oriented accounts will just disable comments, which hurts them a lot because the less comments they have, the less views they're going to get because they're not going to be in the system as much since mm -hmm. the algorithm will read comments and see that as like an active, an active uh, channel that'll get put into recommended feeds more often. So it's the age of child oriented content is going to die pretty quick. Yeah. Which I, so there, there, there's two sides to this. I think part of it's a good side because that means that children are being taken less advantage of and in terms of like money and then, uh, just all the parents that make money off of their, off of their children, like on the internet. That's, that's kind of sketchy to me. Yeah. Plus like it, it puts them out of danger. You know, there's a lot of creepers out there. And so that's, that's really good that that's being taken care of. Yeah. Ryan's parents are going to have to settle with the tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> so sad, man. That's, uh, it's messed up. No. <laughs> Ryan, he's, he's not going to have a good future. No. It's kind of a big bummer for him because, I mean, if he's not recognized at school, then I'd imagine something for as big, it's like, what, almost daily videos, I'm guessing? I don't want, I don't care about it enough no. to even monitor the channel at all. But it's got to be near daily videos. There's no way that the kid is actually attending a public school. Probably not. He's most likely doing some form of online-oriented education, mm. which if then the channel will die, and then, I don't know, maybe he'll start going to public school and you'll get made fun of for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, so there, so just to, just to kind of back up for a minute, there's, there's two things. Um, as I've been uploading the YouTube video version of the podcast, there are two settings for you to kind of fill out as you're posting a video. One of them is if your video is targeted for kids. And then another one is whether or not your video is kid friendly. So basically that just means if you click the yes, it's targeted for kids or it like features kids, then there's some more stuff that you have to fill out and that will determine kind of the type of advertising you get or whether or not you get demonetized. Uh, but then the other side that determines more whether or not you actually get ads is whether or not it's kid friendly. Cause then it, I mean, if it is kid friendly, then it gets distributed to way more people. Um, it's, it's very Disney fied. If we could, if we could throw that in as a word, like it's very, it yeah. just shows that it's clean and it's advertiser friendly. And, and maybe that's a setting in itself is it's not, is it kid friendly? Is it advertiser friendly? Like. I mean, those two are pretty much interchangeable in YouTube these days, which is kind of messed up. But yeah. in any case, that just means that there's, you know, there's two different sides of the story. And basically, you just have to kind of structure your videos and your, and your outloading, uh, uploading, stuff like that in, in that sort of way. Yeah. The, man, news channels have been, I mean, over the past couple of years, they've been suffering. Ooh, baby. But now this is just real bad for them, which is why you see channels like the Philip DeFranco show that have like Boom, majority of their revenue now comes out of outside sponsorships mm -hmm. and their websites and their premium services, which they shouldn't even have to do that. They should be able to right. generate revenue because their videos are not child friendly and they are not oriented towards kids. So they're not going to be put into any recommended feeds and they get demonetized constantly because it's news. It's not... It's not child-friendly content. It's very, very real. Yeah, it's all or nothing with, with that. Like, if it's... Yeah, for sure. If it's not kid-friendly, then advertisers might not want to touch it because then it could be... They could get all kinds of backlash as a, as a company for n not even exp having the opinion of some of these news channels or any of these YouTubers or, like, just just the whole outrage culture that we're experiencing right now if you're even attached to something like the logan paul suicide force type stuff then that's bad news for you as a as a company so it's like stay away <laughs> which is weird that news uh and companies are stuff are so willing to pull out of youtube channels mm -hmm. but they're so willing to stay onto news tv channels yeah that everyone will just burger king mcdonald's disney whoever these big brands will just slap a commercial down onto a news channel and it doesn't get anywhere near the same response as if it was on YouTube, even though it, a lot of that stuff covers the same 
uh, topics, even though news channels tend to be a little bit more biased, I believe, than... Yeah, I mean, like, the whole... Yeah, like, the whole advertising scope for TV is way different. I mean, you think about the Nike ads that were run around the whole Colin Kaepernick yeah. debacle, and you think, wow, I'm surprised, but... Yeah, it's it's super weird, YouTube just being this Wild West, completely anything goes... Yeah, I mean, the the era of TV is dissolving. It's It'll be gone within the next five years. Streaming services will run king, and either you'll have TV um, productions, you'll either have them adapt, like a lot of like ABC and, you know, all these, uh, Disney have all adapted to it. But if it's either change with it or die without it, mm -hmm that I, we're going to see so many channels die. I don't think that, I think in the, the terms of cartoons, I don't think that we're going to see Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network survive. I think that a lot of the the products out of those two, Looney Tunes, SpongeBob, are going to be purchased, hmm. and then the rest of the company is either going to be liquidated or it's going to be absorbed into something else. Like, there's already, I don't, it's, I think, a Warner Brothers has a streaming service that's coming around. Wow. And they've, they've already bought back the Looney Tunes from Cartoon Network. Hmm. So they don't, they've don't. they already stolen a big half of that. And I don't even know if Boomerang still runs anymore. Um, but then I think very few channels will stay active. I feel like we'll maybe have one or one between one and 20 or so uh, channels that still air actively. But those are going to be like Food Network. <laughs> and stuff like that because yeah. um, people I know a lot of people that watch the Food Network still mm -hmm. um, but Discovery Animal Planet I'm sure those these will all merge together into an active streaming service and then they'll be outplayed by all the other streaming services and then they'll have wasted all their money and then they'll go out um, but that's so weird to see that TV has been around for what they, they came around in like the 60s 50s yeah 40s i think television first came around in early like the 40s i think well like i mean but it, it became big around um like 10 years after world war ii oh yeah because yeah i was just about to say like everybody was listening to world war ii and the news like over the radio and then the television as we know it became like super popular during the nuclear age of like the 50s right and okay 60s. yeah it's been around for a long time but it didn't get popular until Right. Later, I was just thinking about all the propaganda ads that, like, <laughs> that and all the, like <laughs> Disney did, like Nazi ducks and stuff like Oof. that. But I just realized that those are probably aired off of uh, movie theaters instead of television. Mm, that does make so, sense. So since they they used to run cartoons and commercials out of movie theaters instead, you just yeah. go there for the day and watch cartoons. Right. Um, so the the television was huge when it first came out. You had the color TV during the nuclear age, um, and people were like. This is revolutionary. This is going mm -hmm. to take over the planet. And it did. For like <laughs> for sure. For the next 30, 40 years, it was huge. Like that was the thing that you did. Dads would come home from work and mm -hmm. sit down and watch TV. Yeah, no more newspaper, no more no. uh like your 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 kids' radio station for your like western or sci-fi adventure. Yep, you didn't have to sit down audio story or something. At six o'clock every night and tune into it. Yep. It now it just played off of a broadcast that would end at 11 o'clock at night, and then it just have the little plane fl flying around the Eiffel Tower. Um, until we got, like, those 24-hour running stations, and then there's a whole evolution of TV. Like, mm -hmm. I that's something that I've looked, like, a lot into, like, how cartoons were only Saturday morning, and then Cartoon Network was the first company um, to push beyond that. I mean... It was called something else before. Um, oh, sure. And then there's so many brands and stuff that just hopped on and, like, just threw out into it. I mean, cartoons is the biggest example that I can use. Mm -hmm. As from movie theaters to Saturday mornings on someone else's station to now having five major cartoon stations that maybe three, I don't know. I don't, I don't There's Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney. So yeah. Is there more than that? It's probably. It's probably. probably. It. Um, not including like the substations of like right, Disney XD right. and Nicktoons or whatever. Um, so they've, they're now huge. They're some of like the biggest rated 
channels out there. I'm doing a lot of hand movements. <laughs> um, and that lead, that you can like talk about like the golden age of cartoons or whatever, because that's um, something that a lot of people can relate to. Anyways, we're getting a little off track. Um, TV evolved and it's had its high point. I would say the highest point for television was definitely the nuclear age. So many people, like it was a household thing because everyone was just so amazed at it. Threw out their radio, let's get a TV. Is it in color? Maybe. How much money did you spend? Yeah. You went in and you had a TV sold to you, but like the same style that you would now go and get a bed sold to you. Or like an outlet, like appliance or something where you have a salesman that'll talk about like this big boy has can fit twenty stations on it. It's a in the color. Screen. Yeah, look I at that. Like That's them apples. there's five colors there. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you, see yellow, but you uh, see most of that rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just the whole television just launched off. And I mean to to think basically the same thing is happening with the internet. Um and I think it's interesting that kind of going back a couple steps and then even back to now, like just, I, I mean, we have all these TV channels that were once like huge. I mean, you got sports, you got news, you got all this kid stuff, all of it's being a very interesting enough. You can find a lot of it on something called YouTube TV. Oh, thanks. so like when we're talking about YouTube and, you know, TV <laughs> and, and all this stuff. I mean, they're very clearly starting to mix together. And so, like, I, I'm not sure if I entirely agree that they would be, that these companies would be dissolved necessarily, but their products are still going to be bought by bigger companies like YouTube. And if you think about it, it's really, really sneaky because there's less people are tuning into, like, actual live TV. I mean, just even as an example, we gave up cable, like, a couple weeks ago, right? And so we signed up for YouTube TV, and now my dad can watch all the sports and stuff. It's no Disney Plus or anything. You can't really watch anything that's pre-recorded unless it's like a YouTube original or something. Um, but there, are all these products, specifically, I think, m mostly, at least from what I've seen, you got like various TV shows um, that cover, you know, more outdoorsy stuff. This is this is at least what my what my dad has been consuming. You got like sports shows and then you have actual sports games um and then you have the news basically yeah and i mean you just take all that and you realize just how sneaky that is because youtube comes out of the corner as this as as originally from from when i started the channel as this you know funky little you know easy way to share you know homemade videos and things yeah to this mega giant that's sneakily taking up you know for abc and NBC and basically just all the sports networks and and sport commentators networks, and and the news cycle and everything. It's really really sneaky. Yeah. What what do you think that the Grim Reaper on cable's doorstep was? Do you think it was the start of Netflix? Because Netflix first started out as like video delivery, where you'd have like a DVD delivered yeah, to you. I remember but that. <laughs> you you could watch those DVDs off of your laptop, and then still, this isn't something that you would watch off of the cable. You would watch this, uh, you'd have to deliver here, and you just watch it off the DVR or off the laptop, and then you'd return it, and you wouldn't have to even worry about watching a TV show or having to rent it off the cable. Hmm. Or do you think it was, like, the, f the invention of YouTube? Of, while not um, hmm. corporate-based content, there was still a lot of user-based content that, drug a lot of people in initially. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things for me to un un unbox in that question. Like, uh, I, I do think um, that streaming services and on-demand stuff is, is what killed cable television. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I don't think it necessarily wiped it out completely in one go. Obviously, there's still some evolution going on there. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that still enjoy cable TV, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I, I do think Netflix was a, was a huge part of that, but I think as well, just the whole mentality of the internet itself. I mean, I think about when you go back to the days of going to Blockbuster or you go to Netflix and you order in the DVDs, mm -hmm. a lot of that is very, uh, manual. And so as soon as the internet as a whole began to take over, then I think that's when cable stopped. On the other side, I think YouTube has... YouTube hasn't, it would be it would be very wrong of me to say that YouTube has slowly, like, evolved. 
it has exploded for sure. Oh, one of the one of the biggest examples is um, I, I I used to love the YouTube rewinds like from 2012 to 2014. I think those were the <laughs> were the only good ones so far. Right. I mean, you just uh, like you can't compute how small YouTube is unless you watch like the YouTube rewind for 2012 when it was made up of. I mean, maybe you saw 40 people on screen, like 40 personalities, I guess you could say, right. or individual channels, to now, when you have Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. Last year we made something you didn't like. Oh this year God. we're going to make something you hate even more. Oh, I don't think I hated it more, but it was embarrassing. It was a uh, glorified Watch Mojo video. <laughs> Basically, uh, which is not a good channel in they, itself. It's not. They shouldn't even make the YouTube rewinds anymore. This has been like discussed among creators for years. They should just stop doing it. Yeah. Or they need to make multiple videos that span over the year. Because they're the problem that they have is you have a year that changes so quick. January even of this year has felt like an entire year it's had a year worth of events fit within one month mm -hmm. that you have to start production as late as you can so i think that they do a lot of the filming around november december so at that point though if they decide to include any memes or current hot media it's going to feel outdated that yeah. But it's really hard to make any of it feel actual, like actually solid, which is why it feels so stale. Like the newest one feels so stale is just because it's a stats video. It's this is the biggest things of the year right there, right there, right there. Biggest K-pop video, biggest creator of the year, biggest music video, whatever. Um, that it's just so dry now or it's either dry or cringy and no one wants either of it. Because they did a good job in the past. I like to think of uh, the video where it has, like, Felix, like, digging, like, the, the rewind button out of, like, the gravel and stuff or burying mm -hmm. it or whatever that actually has PewDiePie in it. Um, I don't remember which one it is, but it's the one that has, like, the buckets of water that, like, go around on everyone. Um, the Ice Bucket Challenge? That might have been, like, 2014. Oh, I think it, was, it, it could have been 2014 that it had, like, all the slow motion bits in it and stuff. That, like, covered, like, huge parts of the channel. It went through, like, five, six, not more than, like, 20 huge aspects of the channel. It didn't go into all this, like, small crap that no one cares about. Mm -hmm. Or it's not, like, super cringy. It's not, like, oh, that's hot. Or, hey, it's Fortnite. Um, and it wasn't super political either. It was no. a celebration yeah. of YouTube as a whole. Which like, it's... as its creators. And if you want to celebrate diversity and stuff, show the diversity of your creators. Yeah. Not push a message. Which... Which nobody likes. Yeah. I think that's something that the newest one did better is that it showcased a lot of the smaller channels that had become bigger and a lot of the international channel or yeah, yeah. channels, which, by the way, the other ones did that too. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I call back to 2014 because I think that's my favorite one. Um, that one had a bunch of diversity. I remember, like, the Just Do It thing that they do it. Yeah. Where it had, like, all of the different types of creators and all the different um, just nationalities of creators that would... It was, it was something. It was something better, as what I can say, versus K-pop. Gosh. <laughs> Sitting around the campfire. Yeah. So, so yeah. To, to back up a little bit, I, I, just thinking that YouTube is the biggest culprit for the end of cable television, I think that's a huge part of it, because YouTube is pretty much synonymous with the internet now. And if you think about... Um, what YouTube has become and why we're ranting about this YouTube rewind thing is because YouTube is huge. And again, like if you go back and watch uh, rewind 2012 or something like that is so small. Yeah. And when I was first putting out videos like back in 2010 and 2011, YouTube was so small. Absolutely. And everything was made off of like, it, it was not necessarily quality content, but people put a lot of time into it. For something that, I I can't go on YouTube anymore and find a video that's under like 10 minutes anymore. It's all like 15 to half hour to 45 minute like stuff and I, and I can't handle it. It's so much of it just demands your time and energy and just that, just YouTube getting so huge is 
just the biggest show that the internet is bigger than ever, which is if the, if the internet's bigger than ever, then that's how you communicate your, your deals and you, and you push your ads and you, and you do stuff like that. Not cable television. Yeah. I can't deal with the recommended feed anymore. I, before I was like over the past month, it's evolved for me so much and I haven't wanted it to change because I spent a lot of time watching reviews on movies and, um, just like talks, like a lot of videos that talk about movies. And then I watch one video on like DC, like comic stuff, or I watch <laughs> one video on like Super Smash Bros. Then my entire recommended feed becomes filled with it. Yeah. Like I watched one video of it. That doesn't mean that I want it in my recommended feed anymore. <laughs> it's, I like, where, where'd my, where'd my movie reviews go? They're gone now. Goodbye. Yeah. It's definitely not personal anymore. But... It's, it's hard that while YouTube is at not, it's not at its height, but it's, it's still a monster. For sure. I feel like it's the next step of media that's going to just die out eventually where it's like different levels. Even though Netflix came before, it was like the Grim Reaper for both <laughs> that you had cable television. Grim Reaper gave it the slap. You get like, and then YouTube basically helped bury the body. Um, <laughs> nice. So they, they killed the cable TV, but then the Green Reaper, he doesn't stop. He just kills everyone else. But this time the Green Reaper has five friends. They're called Disney Plus and Hulu, <laughs> Amazon Prime. And now they're here and they've evolved and people love it. Mm -hmm. They can't get enough of it because it's new active content and they've created originals themselves. The Mandalorian has changed media that they're going to kill YouTube now, that YouTube has their YouTube TV, and that's probably what's going to keep them alive for at least a while until Disney buys out all the sports channels and starts doing sports <laughs> on one of their own apps, and then YouTube will die. That I think streaming services are going to kill YouTube. That, th that the pre-recorded uh, streaming service is already going downhill. That <laughs> people enjoy live streams or... That's it. Like the, the amount of Twitch and um, all the other new live streaming services have grown exponentially. They've grown like almost as fast as YouTube. They gain, they gain millions of viewers and some of their faces are more recognizable than, you know, regular celebrities like Ninja Tyler Blevins. He is one of the biggest celebrities of this past decade. He's mm -hmm. completely changed the media. He, like, he's made streaming huge. Like, Twitch, like, doubled its viewership yeah. because he stole so many people out of YouTube and just, like, destroyed it. I remember the days when YouTube was simple. When I first started to watch YouTube in, like, 2012, and basically that was to watch Dang. Minecraft. Dang. Yeah, I was watching Minecraft out here, watching the, the Fossils and Archaeology mod with Poet Plays, you know. <laughs> That, I remember that I can remember the first YouTuber that I ever actively watched, and that's crazy that I can remember that. But it's so, it's weird. It's just such a tricky um, thing to put into words of just like this crazy changes in media that we've had over the past, because television stayed roughly the same for oh, yeah. 30 years. They, we got bigger TVs with more colors and more channels. But that's it. We didn't get a new way to watch TV until the DVR right. where you could save like what you watched or you could yeah, yeah. you could buy or rent movies off of it. Um, but now we have content that can be created by anyone. We have content that's more readily available that you don't have to wait a certain time to watch. You have content that can be viewed on multiple devices. You can view it on your phone, your TV, your laptop. You can listen to it. Like now, boom! There it is. Debated everybody. Jubated. We're we're gonna die out one day. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that there's no way because TV just hasn't been adaptable. Where it's like boomers looking at millennials <laughs> and Gen Z and be like, oh, that's just a fad. TV and the internet, or not TV, the internet and YouTube. That's just a fad. That's gonna go away. Old is still good. Well, it's not. Because now it's original for the people of that new era. Mm -hmm. That this new uh, media is now considered better. 
I'm surprised that Redbox is still around. They seem yeah, to, they seem to be sure. doing fine, probably because they're all placed out of like McDonald's and grocery stores. Well, yeah. people can just walk past and be like, "Oh, hello." <laughs> but now, um, but they're they're not they're not gonna last now because Disney Plus main culprit here, Disney Plus, will now release what was going to be released onto video directly onto the streaming service. Which, if you have the streaming service, it's now free. The new Lion King movie just came out, and say so did Aladdin onto Disney Plus, hmm. which the Lion King um, also like just barely came out on DVD as well. So people can either pay for the subscription or pay for the movie. People would rather pay for the subscription. Yeah. So Redbox is gonna lose like half of its films because they're all owned by Disney, and now they're gonna be stuck with like Universal and Warner Brothers content, which people aren't going to be as interested in. Some people. Enough to keep it alive, but they're definitely going to be closing more kiosks. So um, I'm, let's let's just get this straight. And I also and I, I also don't want to verge too much into like subscription territory because I already did that one with Simon. You right. can go back and listen to that. Yeah. Um, but so you're th- you're thinking streaming services are going to beat out YouTube? Yes, because there's too many of them, and they're just going to keep coming. And YouTube has been having mountains upon mountains of problems over the past couple of years. Okay. They keep having all their ads pulled. They keep having to change all their policies. They keep getting million-dollar fines constantly that streamers and creators are going to leave to someone that's going to treat them better. Or they're just going to play the ball and they're going to cater to a certain audience. But you're going to have the majority of people choose the content that they know is not going to be controversial Hmm. that youtube is just going to be loaded with creators oh found out this creator with their kids they've been abusing their children Uh oh the police came and they just stole 10 children from these families and now the oh guess what the parents are now sentenced to 20 years in prison (laughs) daddy five we're looking at you okay or you're going to have even content that shouldn't be controversial where a YouTuber shared his political opinion. Casey Neistat voted for Hillary Clinton. Who cares? <laughs> Which you shouldn't care, but people do care. Yeah. And then they get all their ads pulled for them for sharing an opinion. Philip DeFranco has gotten kicked in the nuts for the past five years. Yeah. He has had almost all his ads pulled for him. Same with PewDiePie, which he's been treated most unfairly by the news. Oh, for sure. Of any content creator. I constantly see, like, just complete hit pieces of PewDiePie's taking a break from YouTube. Good. Like, are, like that are completely in the negative that just cover all these controversies that aren't even accurate. And, I mean, he's completely fine to take a break. He definitely deserves mm. that break. And, honestly, if he just decide to not come back to the service, I'd be like, that's fine. He has millions of dollars that he can retire off to. And then he can just do, he has a a streaming service that he uses. He can just live stream for however long he wants. He doesn't want to quit YouTube, he said very specifically. But it's become so hard for the creators to do anything. That original content off of streaming services has become so much easier to produce, which is why it's come out in such bulk. Like Disney Plus has a mountain of new original, which I've seen people complain that there's not enough. Like, Are you serious? No, there's, (laughs) there's so much original content here. Or YouTube and Amazon Prime, like The Boys or Stranger Things or whatever, that these have all, like, pushed out just so heavily of this content that's quality and it's long and it's interesting and it's not controversial. And if the actor does some something controversial, whatever. It's not like it's the YouTuber who you talk to and you like, you have a conversation mentally with every single day that that's them. I mean, you don't really know a YouTuber until you see them outside of YouTube, Mm -hmm. but that's still, they're not acting when they're, they're sort of, it's more like a stage play where they have their script and that's it, but they're not trying to be someone else like an actor. So if an actor does something wrong, then you can be like, Oh, well that's the actor's opinion. That's not this character's opinion. Um, that, sorry, I've been talking for a long time. It's okay. But YouTube has been having such a a struggle to even, like, form anything to get, like, a foothold because there's so much content that they have to monitor 
that they get these these systems and these AIs and everything, and they're like, okay, fix it. And the AIs do not fix it. They make it worse. They slap ban hammers and they disable the comments, take away all the monetization, and then people have to constantly do appeals to get their money back. By mm -hmm. that time, the money's not worth the hassle. Yeah. So you have so many people losing here. Like, everyone is losing. And it's not really... It's not good no. at all. Yeah. Sorry, just had a little voice crack there. <laughs> okay. um, that pe there's no losers in streaming services. If you get a, an original TV show or an original movie, fine. YouTube, or not YouTube, Netflix or Disney Plus has now paid for that. You get your money. Even if it doesn't get that many taps on it, even if not very many people watch it, that's fine. You still got your money. Mm -hmm. That you don't you don't lose here. The only person that loses is the big company, but with YouTube, the company loses, and so do you. Like um, the company for YouTube, they don't lose a whole lot anymore because of how, just how much their income has been, uh, especially paired with Google and YouTube TV and stuff like that. Um, which YouTube has pushed out some original content, but I wouldn't say that it's really enough to compensate because they. A lot of it is like based off of the YouTubers and people aren't going to watch like the Logan Paul original TV show. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's just become such a, like a waste of space that there's nothing really productive happening here. I think that compared to the old days of YouTube where things were, were simple, where people, YouTube made money off of just having basic ads on the website where like you'd have an ad on the side like a regular website until they were forced to put ads in their videos by the United States government. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't shade. Yeah, which instead don't, please, of... Please don't draft us for World War Three. I don't, please, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't. don't. <laughs> um, this is... But they've expanded upon it rather than like just saying, okay... We have to put an ad in front of our videos now. Instead, they've just let it let creators just go crazy with it. And then they've yeah. pushed it even more. They say, okay, creators, you can choose where your ads are. And now mm -hmm. you look at a video and it's got 30 ad breaks in it. Or now, like the biggest evil of all, uh, two ads in a row that you can't skip. That I'm, I'm so tired of it, of getting all the ads that you can... You could get ad blocker, but then you're not supporting the creator. Yeah. Which these people have to do this for a living at this point. Because, I mean, people don't want to hire YouTubers unless it's for another media service. If, if your channel goes out and then someone looks up your name online and finds your YouTube channel, they're going to be like, bye. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't want you. I'll get someone who has experience in this field or has actually worked what a lot of boomers will say, a real job. <laughs> You know, yes. where I see like a lot of YouTubers complain about it of when um, people say, I work a job that's 10 to 10 or I work a job that's nine to five, six, seven days a week. How come I don't get like three month long breaks like you guys? And then YouTubers respond like, yeah, you should. You should get those breaks. I'm sorry that you don't, but I'm taking one. So I, I don't know if I necessarily agree that YouTube is going to die. Uh, I think they're just too big now um and they have such control over their creators so so here let's go over the the different parts of youtube real quick okay. first of all we have um creator content like just average run-of-the-mill people that do vlogs they do shorts they do reaction videos and let's throw gaming in there as well because gaming was a huge part of the explosion of youtube as well yes which then in led to twitch so um so yeah, we got we got we got that part of it. Which, if we're if we're looking at it, at this point, I mean, you go back again. Let's go back to two thousand twelve. The creators were in total control, because YouTube didn't know that they could give as much money as they do now, under the right circumstances, yeah. of course. Uh, nobody really understood um, just how big it was going to get from doing these stupid videos like gaming and unboxing and reaction and stuff like that. Nobody had any idea. Mm -hmm. And so when these YouTubers are putting out these, you know, less than 10 minute videos that are Nerf Wars, vlogs, uh, 
pretty much just whatever skits, funny videos. You got Fred in there, mm-hmm. this little smosh in there. There's just all these skits that are for pure entertainment. The creators were in total control. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. But nowadays it's completely different because the creators are slave basically to YouTube. Because yeah. YouTube, again, decides how much money you get, whether you get it at all, and uh, whether or not you actually get any support from them, or if they're going to help bail you out in like a controversy case or something like that and plus it there's just so much beef between youtubers these days anyway so there's the creator side i i think just youtube has has too much power to like stop people from wanting to upload so there's that okay and then let's switch over to basically youtube originals i think uh, YouTube produces a lot of original content uh, for what we can basically boil down to say is, uh, say, like, premium price. It's bonus stuff, basically. Yeah. Just all these things that help you remove the advertisements. You can watch stuff that YouTube produces as, as itself. You can do all this crazy stuff. And then, I think third of all, then you have stuff like YouTube TV, which is network television put through a YouTube system. Mm -hmm. All of that is ruled by Google, which is huge. You, uh, I almost said Google. (laughs) Google can keep YouTube alive for as long as it wants because of how rich Google is. Because again, it's the internet. I mean, you think Internet Explorer is out the door. Nobody's using that. Um, Firefox is slow. Safari is slow. Um, Whatever else, you know, browser program you can think of uh there's google at the top google chrome which get that bing (laughs) whatever (laughs) yeah uh google chrome it rules everything and it is the internet which is why you can basically say that youtube is synonymous with the internet it's just so huge at this point that i don't think it can die i think it can definitely suffer uh you can have big time creators and even just small-time creators that don't necessarily... I mean, if you do take the slave route of being, you know, flashy, super kid-friendly, previously targeted kids, but since YouTube got the slap from the general public, they can't do that anymore. That YouTube will get away with whatever they, whatever they want for as long as they can up until they have to stop and then they're like, okay, let's quote-unquote fix this. Uh, you, just, you have all these creators that can suddenly get by by not doing well they they get by by creating content and garnering support for them but then they have all these uh premium features and just ways you can donate i mean patreon's a huge one mm-hmm. and you have all these other things like uh gofundmes and kickstarters and and merch is a huge part of it you get a website um i i think like the the there's like paid subscriptions you can do on YouTube. It's like premium right. subscription or something like that. It's like a pledge, I think is what it's called. It's a pledge. Yeah, and I think most of that money goes to creators, uh, which basically just in, in return give out bonus content that is for pledges only, basically. Uh, I, I, yeah, I just think YouTube is ginormous, and I don't think it can be defeated by something like streaming services because so if if you take youtube before it was sold to google then yeah i think it could die because advertisements could a lot of it is advertisements if we're if we're thinking about it they could all switch over to disney plus i don't think disney plus has advertisements does it okay awesome other than advertisements for other disney well okay but that that makes sense and they're probably not outrageously annoying like a lot of youtube mm-hmm. ads are um yeah youtube as a company by itself definitely in the toilet dead in the water but given that it's such a huge part of the internet itself and then also that it's owned by basically the internet i i don't think that it can be forced to bleed out so much because you still have to use that same internet to access disney plus or um netflix and stuff like that yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, but I think what we'll see more is that while YouTube won't directly die, I think 
we will see a more direct competition that other than oh, streaming 100%. services, I think that we will see another video streaming platform that'll become huge. Whether Twitch or any of the other live streaming services decide to adopt pre-recorded videos, then I, they can just completely ride off of this. They can say, well, over here, the creators have power. Over here, you don't have to worry about ads. Mm -hmm. Over here, we have what they don't, or we have, or we don't have what they have. That they can just completely play off of this competition. Mm -hmm. And I feel like YouTube's going to, well, may, they may not die. They'll probably, I'd say they'll definitely stay alive out of their TV service. Um, that we'll see a much more direct competition that maybe, maybe it's very slim that they may pass them in the terms of personalized streaming videos. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, just again, I, YouTube, YouTube to me seems to be a lot more like movie theaters these days. Mm. I mean, it's, we get frustrated with them sometimes because we don't like how much popcorn and concessions cost and just forget about ticket costs these days is ridiculous twenty dollars for a ticket like you were saying like when they were running all those disney anti-nazi propaganda ads back when in the movie theaters i mean you would go to the movie theater for a dime and you were there for like the day yeah yeah <laughs> and you could watch whatever they threw up on the screen but nowadays i mean obviously it costs a lot more and then as well you're limited to the products they have available to you um, in terms of popularity and stuff like that, in terms of what the uh, overruling companies decide they want to show at these theaters. But at, at this point, YouTube has just become such a huge cultural staple, like like going to the movie theater. Uh, there's nothing Disney could ever do to say, oh, we're premiering the new Disney movie on Disney Plus and Disney Plus alone. There's no way that would work. Yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't make anywhere near as much money. No. Just for the simple reason that not everyone is a part of the Disney Plus, where uh, a, a movie that premieres out of a movie theater will premiere, will uh, cander to both people who have Disney Plus and people who don't have Disney Plus. Right. Which is why I think that while that we are like in the silver age of movie theaters, not necessarily the golden age, because mm -hmm. there was a point when movie theaters were huge, much, oh, yeah. much like TV, they were huge. Um, but they're definitely doing better because i remember in the early 2000s when uh netflix and whatever and youtube were coming around people were like this is the death of television or this is the death of movie theaters but they're still doing very well very um, well making billion dollar uh movies or i guess distributing billion billion dollar movies and the theaters make so much money off of it plus the the hyper um upsell that they have on all of their products yeah you think about endgame and the fact that it's the highest grossing movie of all time it's not because it made that money off of disney plus subscriptions it made that money off of literally the box office yeah where you go to buy tickets to go see it in a theater oh it's just such a cultural staple. And in, in that same way, I don't think YouTube can really go anywhere because it is that iconic pe part of the internet. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, it's a very tricky topic to talk about because there's no way of predicting the future of it. I mean, you never know. Maybe in 10 years' time, if another streaming platform becomes huge, YouTube, YouTube may decide or Google may decide to shut down parts of YouTube and focus mm -hmm. on other aspects of yeah. it. Yeah. We could see like massive layoffs of seeing hundreds of youtubers losing their job um which, like youtube at the company or like creators a little bit of both okay. of seeing creators and both people who monitor that content we could see them we could see hundreds right. of people lose their jobs um but it's just like so hard to predict what will happen that it could be best case scenario where youtube actually fixes itself mm -hmm. and just continues to be the staple that it is or you could see worst case where google decides to just st shut down that branch yeah um but it's you never know which i think is the interesting part of media is that you never know how something will turn out i remember so many people thought that endgame was going to do worse than infinity war <laughs> there's definitely a lot of things that could definitely go wrong for youtube and and the internet as a whole um and 
just the thing that's coming to my mind right now is just streaming in general. Like n- nobody thought streaming was going to catch on. No. And if you think about it in its purest form, it's doing what a lot of, um, I would say self-sufficient YouTubers, people that receive donations as, as their income over advertisements. Um, which by the way, that's always horrifying when you, that's horrifying for me to think about when, you know, most of your revenue is coming in through donations from generous people, Mm -hmm. but YouTube, even though deeming your content, not advertiser friendly, will advertise on your videos. So there's advertisements on your videos that people have to skip through. And then YouTube takes the money from that because of people opting out of advertisements or just generally not being super advertiser friendly because as soon as youtube can label you not advertiser friendly then that's basically when they can take all the money that does actually come in um but anyway yeah just uh these uh, twitch is that self-sufficient creator vessel i mean most of his donations twitch doesn't do anything to promote your videos and they yeah. put advertisements on there until you, like, actually pay for a subscription. Yeah, well, th- they do have some where, like, you see creators given spotlights through other social medias. Like, I see oh, yeah. Twitter does it a lot where, <laughs> check out this new creator. And that's mm. the people may just make memes about it because some of them are just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but definitely in the terms of control, you definitely have a more creator-oriented control. And even then, it's better than YouTube, but not by much, which is why you see right. why you see people leave to Mixer, because Mixer is full creative control there, hmm. um, which I think Mixer is going to be like one of the biggest contenders to YouTube and Twitch, because it's while it was exclusive to Xbox, that was the only thing you could stream off of it what? for a while. Yep, that the app to watch stuff was originally on the Xbox and huh. you could only stream stuff off of the Xbox, but it's now expanded greatly to other consoles, computer, what, whatever. That That's it's, weird. It is really weird. I remember when Mixer first came around and it was like, this isn't going to beat out Twitch. Twitch has expo- like, a, like a part of um, Xbox, you know, still, which I was surprised that they kept Twitch on Xbox when Mixer was brought around. Mm-hmm. But Mixer is now just taking control. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's super weird and just the whole online range of distribution and creativity, like yeah, there's there's no there's no real telling where any of it's gonna lead to or how bad it's gonna get or how good it's gonna get. Again, I don't think YouTube is the greatest platform in the world and I don't necessarily think it's gonna get better at what it does. I think just online creativity is the way that things are going to go because people really do enjoy watching streams and stuff. Personally, for me, I don't I don't enjoy watching a stream. I don't I don't like watching someone play video games uh, necessarily unless it's cut and edited really mm-hmm. nicely. To me, it just it doesn't seem like as much effort, and at the same time as well, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem entirely worth my time (laughs) very very occasionally will i enjoy watching like a playthrough of a video game it has to be someone that i'm interested in first of all and then it also has to be a product that i'm interested in right and streaming you don't really have a choice of either i mean you have a choice of who you can watch you don't necessarily know what they're going to play unless they have like a usual shtick or anything and it just seems like a lot of time and uh, just a huge thing for me was a little while ago realizing just how much I was being depressed and feeling like useless and and really sad and kind of down on myself because of how much I was watching YouTube. And then as soon as I stopped watching YouTube so much, I became so much better because then your time isn't directed to all these usual things. But anyway, that's that's something else. Yeah, that's thing. that's the main reason why I got off of Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like I just you're so much happier without it. Oh, I, yeah. I stuck around to Twitter because there's a lot of news there and I like to find out which country just got blown up. Um, <laughs> or, a lot of yikes on this show. Yeah, okay. there's, there's <laughs> a lot of... Um, but I keep Reddit for memes because they make yeah. me happy. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's just... The way we need to fix things, or at least the way people think we need to fix things, is, is not the actual way to fix things. Mm. 
like uh, if you if you want people to start getting paid more on YouTube, then you need to stop donating as much. And donating is really good and it's really pure because most, if not all, of your money is going straight to the creator. It's awesome. I feel like in a lot of ways it's the same way as, uh, I mean, we're in America, obviously, so we're used to American culture. If we really wanted restaurant owners to start paying like food staff a lot more, then we got to, as a society, stop tipping, which is horrifying to think about for, for uh, across both sections, because you think if we stop tipping these people, then they immediately lose most of their income, which is a huge problem. And the big, uh, just really the big problem that we're facing right now, I mean, if we're going to dip into a little bit of politics and stuff, I, I personally don't think that raising the minimum wage is going to help anybody. Because if you raise minimum wage for that person that works at McDonald's, then all of a sudden the Big Mac price goes up. Mm -hmm. And then the minimum wage means nothing because all of a sudden you have this huge, like, just this domino effect, this butterfly effect into what basically amounts to, um, you, you start paying your worker more than minimum wage. So therefore the, the, um, demand and availability of say housing has to start going up because more people can afford it. The real problem that we need to face is greed here in oh, a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah. So if you want YouTube to start paying people more then they need to stop making as much money as they do as a company. Um, if we want, you know, minimum wage working people to have, uh, if, if we want them to have financial success, then the people who own the housing market need to tone it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of complex issues all tied to this, but, uh, I think just at, at, at the very bottom, I think we could say that, uh, online is definitely like the internet is definitely crushing it in terms of a uh, consumer product. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In comparison to, like you were saying, Netflix and streaming services and stuff like that, which are also doing amazingly well. But I think when it comes to streaming services, we might want to include that into the internet. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I, I mean, <laughs> this whole conversation's kind of moved away from what I was originally picturing, but that's totally fine. Oh, okay. I think it's been worth it. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's I think this is a good place to wrap up. Yeah, I think we should end it there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yeah, this has been the uh, Ravenfly Podcast. I've been here with... Oh, am I supposed to... Okay, let's roll that back. Let's roll. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this has been the Ravenfly Podcast. Uh, I'm Harrison Kent. I've been here with... Sam Dow. Sam Dow. We've had an excellent conversation on online media. And, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been good having you guys. Thank you for listening. It's been good. It's been deep. We'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye.